Blessed are you, O Virgin Mary, who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. From the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Lord, you, Lord. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard of Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Most blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He scattered the proud in their conceit. He's cast down the mighty from their thrones, and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. Have you ever played those video games where you have to find a key or unlock this, or go through a certain sequence to get to where you're going? Anybody done those? Nobody? Any hands? A lot of people? Some? No? Many? Anyways, my point is that we as humans really like to figure stuff out. When we figure something out, we kind of are happy. You know, if, we, if something, some concept in our mind kind of all works out, it's like really cool because at the very heart of who we are as human beings is we ask questions. And in fact, if you don't engage in that work, it's hard to appreciate what you've been given. Like a lot of people might get a calculator and learn how to punch the buttons, but if they don't know the math behind it, what happens if the battery dies and you need to figure something out? because we have a lot of capacity in our brain to figure stuff out. And that's why it's important for us to do what we can to figure things out. God made us this way. And God just, he tells us very clearly that I'm God and Mary's my mother and we can believe that and if we do, great. But God won't force it on us. But when we start to look at things as like a mystery, like, why do you think this feast is on uh, May 31st? Any ideas? What are some of the facts that we know about Mary? When did the angel say, you are to conceive and bear a son? Does anybody know what the feast day that is? When we celebrated that feast day? Okay, let's start with this. When do we celebrate the birth of Jesus? What day? You know? What do we call it? When do you get presents? Christmas. So what day, day is Christmas? Does anybody know what day Christmas is? December 25th. So how long does it take for a baby to be born? Nine months. So can you do the math? What's nine months before Christmas? Anybody know? 
Do you believe me if I tell you it's March? March 25th is when we celebrate the angel coming to Mary and saying, Mary, you're going to have a kid. And what else did the angel tell Mary this time? Do you remember? Your kinswoman, and what's her name? Who's Mary's kinswoman? Anybody know this? Any ideas? Elizabeth, very good. Elizabeth. And what did Jesus say about Elizabeth? Do you remember? Anybody remember when Mary appears? She says, kinswoman is in her sixth month. So when your mom's getting ready to have a baby, about in nine months into it, it's kind of hard, right? And that's in our house when we usually have air conditioning, it's pretty comfortable. But out in the desert, when it's hot, no air conditioning. So do the math. Elizabeth had, she was in her sixth month, March 25th, April, May, two more months. So now Elizabeth is just about ready to have a baby. And Mary goes to be with her, right? That's what we celebrate today. So it all fits, see how it all works? It all fits in the, in the timeline. So Mary came about a month before she was due and stayed for about a month after the newborn baby to help her along the way. You see, there is an attack in our world on belief. When you start to go to college or even if you go to a public high school, there'll be a lot of subtle things that will try and get you to think that all religions are just kind of mythical. And they'll say, at best, they can kind of help some people. But you see, our religion is not mythical. It is factual. Jesus was born. These things really happened. He died for us on the cross, and three days later, he rose from the dead. That's a big deal. And we have witnesses. This isn't just some cleverly concocted story. We have witnesses, but yet God won't foist himself upon us. He just invites us to believe in him. And, if, and we know that we believe in him when we try and follow his commandments. And what are the two most important, how did Jesus summarize the two great commandments? The first one applies to the first three commandments, and the last one applies to the rest of the seven. Anybody know? Jesus said, this is the great commandment. Do you know what it is? That's number two. So what was the first one? You know? Okay, that's, a, that's the first natural commandment. So the first is don't take any false gods before me, right? But the one that he summarized, he says, O Israel, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your strength, and then love your neighbor as yourself. Can you imagine what the world would be like if we would just treat everybody like we would like to be treated? Do you want people to steal your stuff? No. Don't steal people's stuff. Do you want, do you want to be bullied by some jerk? No. Then don't be a jerk. Try and treat each other with great and profound respect. And Mary is the example of that. So my brothers and sisters, I'm going to miss you guys over the summer, okay? Hopefully I'll see you at Mass on Sundays. And so please take this opportunity to continue to pray. Try and pray the rosary every day. It's hard for you to understand, but in my opinion, the world needs a lot of prayers. It always did, but we're in some very difficult times. Poor people don't respect life. You have people who are sick going around shooting people and hurting people, and we need to be that part of society that can show mercy and love and forgiveness and help people to think more deeply about the truth. And that truth is Jesus. And he loves you more than you can even begin to imagine, okay? 
So let us pray that God will help us and let us ask our lady for help too because she's our mom too. Jesus gave Mary our mother to be our mother. So we all have a perfect mother. And in St. Joseph, we have a perfect father. Sometimes, humanly speaking, our moms and dads aren't perfect. You know, I was so, so silly as a kid. I said, why doesn't our world just get better? We can learn from the mistakes of our parents and just correct them and not do the same dumb things my parents did. And my parents basically did no dumb things. I had great parents. But that didn't stop me from thinking they could have been better because of my own pride and my own arrogance, my own inability to recognize things as they are. So engage in the investigation. Look at the facts. Seek out things so that you can not only know God is true because you've heard somebody say it, but when you look at the facts of history, how he used prophecies, predicted this, told the world that he was coming, and then he came. Even told the world he would die and suffer and three days later rise from the dead. It was all predicted, and it came to pass. That's why our faith is so different. There's all kinds of people that claim people rose from the dead and things like that, but nobody saw it. It's just kind of a myth. But it's not that way with Jesus. We have evidence. And guys, try and say this prayer from your heart. God, lead me to your truth. Not Father Glenn's truth, not the Pope's truth, but the truth. Lead me to the truth because the truth gives us joy and peace. It's given me joy and peace, and I thank God for that. Does that mean I'm perfect? No, of course not. I'm still a sinner. But at least I'm trying to get better because I know that the fruit of holiness is joy and happiness when we don't think just about ourselves, but we think more about other people. You know, that's what Catholic marriage is, right? Two people give up their own life to live with this other person so that their love can explode into new life and bring children into the world and grow them up, grow, have them grow up to love God and each other too. God has given us a gift in our life. He's made some of us men, he's made some of us women, and we all work together in the respective gifts that we have to pursue the true, the good, and the beautiful. All right? Thank you, Mary, for all that you've given us. And I've asked everybody to pray in these, these days leading up to Pentecost that we are filled with the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful. Enkindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit that we might be recreated and thus renew the face of the earth. Amen. Let us stand as we bring our prayers of intercession before the Lord. For the church that she may always and everywhere proclaim, proclaim God's mercy and forgiveness with joy through the grace of the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to hatred and violence, that a serious commitment to the work of mercy and unity may fill every corner of the word, world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the health and safety of military personnel, for first responders, and all who stand in harm way to protect and defend the lives of others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For blessings in our soon to be eighth grade graduates, that they may always recognize the hand of God in all their accomplishments. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the suffering, and the grieving, especially those in community of South Texas, that God love, God's love may bring them comfort and hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the inter intentions we hold in our the silence of our hearts for Lauren God, Dodd for whom this mass is offered we pray to the Lord Lord hear our prayer for those who have died our decreased loved ones and all who gave their lives in service to na our nation 
that they may enjoy eternal life in God's heavenly kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of the people gathered here before you, those spoken and those kept in the silence of our hearts. Answer them insofar as they meet our deepest needs and are in accord with your holy and divine will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The offertory hymn is number 81 in your folder, Cornerstone. Number 81 in your folder. Mm -hmm. 